Hello and welcome back Supermums. In today's video we're going to be looking at some basic healthy eating guidelines that you can add to your life really simply so you have more energy day to day to live the life that you enjoy without having to go on a diet. <music> please make sure you are liking, sharing and subscribing so we can reach out to more mums and help them enjoy their motherhood. You are what you eat, so don't be fast, cheap or easy. I love that quote. It really sums up my attitude toward food. You get out of your body what you put into it and if you want to look and feel a certain way, healthy eating is a must. But with constant new research coming out, it can be particularly overwhelming to know where to start. I used to be ridiculously unhealthy. I had zero idea of what a healthy diet actually looked like and it wasn't until my mum got sick that I really started to look at what I put on my plate and into my body. I've since become a health and fitness professional. I've now studied the topic because I found it so fascinating. And I'm gonna share some of the guidelines that I incorporate into my life so I never feel like I'm on a diet, but I'm always looking and feeling the way I want to. When I was eating badly, I didn't have anything to give to the world. I was miserable. But it's not surprising, my poor body was desperately trying to get any nutrition out of the food I was putting into it, while also trying to deal with the junk and get rid of the stuff it didn't need or want. People get so caught up in the big wins, jumping at the sugar and the coffee, but the problem is these just lead to even bigger crashes. It's an endless cycle that we have to make a conscious effort to break. And it is tough because coming off sugar and caffeine is still, it's like coming off a drug, it's an addictive substance. So once you're into a healthy way of eating, it's great, but the change is hard. I'm gonna work my way through six points that you can incorporate into your life to make healthy eating part of who you are. But if you're ready to go a bit more hardcore, I'm also gonna link down below my 14 day food challenge for free as a download. Please remember it's called a challenge for a reason. This is designed to be a little bit more extreme. It's just a 14 day blast to help you get over the initial hump. I would then look at tailoring it more to your lifestyle further down the line. So number one, let's get real. In my local small supermarket, there are at least two aisles that are labelled as food that I wouldn't deem fit for human consumption. We are so used to processed foods that we kind of don't even register that they're processed anymore. In theory, there are more three categories to food. The actual real, like an actual apple or an actual carrot. The extreme process, like a Russler burger or a microwave meal. And then there's the middle food. Things like bread and bacon and pasta have still gone through processes. These aren't necessarily things to completely cut out, but they are things to really monitor and really reduce. They're not necessarily real food. Also be aware of the packets you buy. Supermarkets, shops are really bad at buffering out food. Sausages had a pretty bad reputation for this because they were full of fillers and very little meat. But with so many new sausages come to the market, the cheaper brands are having to step up. Make sure you're checking labels. Make sure you're buying real food. The interesting one is looking at your the, the conveyor belt when you're in the supermarket. How much actual food can you see? Real food tends to come in less packaging or is available in less packaging. The fruit and veg or the meat counter. Those are the kind of things you want to be putting on your plate and putting into your body not the things that have been overly prepped in advance. Snacks, and particularly children's snacks, are the worst for this. I once had someone try and convince me that a popular brand of organic snack for designed for babies and toddlers was all natural and all organic. Yes, the items in the food were organic where possible, but I have never seen a corn powder tree. I've also never seen a carrot powder plant. Why not just give them the carrot stick? The items were actually labelled carrot sticks, yet they were more like puffy polystyrene covered in orange powder. 
I have quite strong personal opinions about what I will allow my small human to eat. I want her to grow up knowing what real food is. As a health and fitness professional, I see the damage all these processed and fake foods are doing to our ability to identify what is and isn't good for us. These kind of foods are way too new to our diet. We have no idea how much damage they could possibly be doing. It's safer to go back to our roots, pun intended when it comes to carrots, and really eat the things that have been around a long time. Just because a now processed item was originally made by natural things does not mean it's mentally and physically a healthy way to go when it comes to eating. Number two, flush it out. We are really bad at drinking enough water. I struggle with this so much. I've always got a water bottle full. I don't like tap water. That's a whole other story. So we've bought one of the like office water coolers that we have in our garage so that we're the bottles are refilled. So I'm not creating like extra plastic by having bottled water all the time. And it's also at a nice temperature whenever we want to drink it. And then we all have our water bottles and we have two glass jug jugs in our fridge, one with lemon in and one plain, so that we always have water that we're gonna go to. For me personally, if I only had tap water, I would struggle even more to get enough water in me. So it's about finding ways to make it more interesting and more fun. You might need to make it a very weak squash or some kind of fruit tea. Be very careful with the squashes you buy. Some are dramatically worse than others when it comes to sugar and coloring and additives. And try and wean the, how much squash you put in down gradually. Drink a large glass of water as soon as you wake up with every alcoholic beverage, with every cup of coffee and before every meal or snack. This is a great way of making sure that one, you're hungry and not thirsty, but also that you're keeping your body hydrated. When you're not drinking enough water, your body will store the water and you'll find yourself getting puffy and bloated. That's because your body is panicking that it's not gonna get another drink when it needs to. As your body gets more used to constantly having enough fluid, it will let go of that water retention and you'll instantly look and feel better. Number three, carbs are not your friend. Yes, I'm a carb hater, I'm afraid. I have my per own personal reasons, but a lot of what I believe is nicely summed up in the book, Why We Get Fat, which I will link down below. If you wanna get into the science of why I believe this, that is the thing to have a read through. It's amazing, and it makes it so easy to give up carbs or massively reduce them once you've digested everything in that book. The other great thing about this book is it crushes a lot of myths about why carbs are good. And having read it, I would much rather live on a diet of cheese and steak than on a diet of pasta and bread. Number four, face your addiction. As a nation, we are addicted to sugar. It is a big problem. And it's not just the, quote, sugary foods. It creeps in everywhere. Start looking at the sources and spreads that you buy that you deem to be savoury and you will find that they are often cram packed full of sugar. It is much easier to make a sweet thing taste nice. Science experiments have really gone into how sugar is so much more addictive than what is considered some hardcore drugs. If you had a hardcore drug addiction, your friends and family would be worried about you. You would ideally seek help and get off your problem substance. But we just don't seem to be as willing to do it with sugar. Maybe it's because a lot of the damage happens internally. Just because you are looking lean and fine on a diet of mainly sugar does not mean your insides are not crying out for help. And unfortunately, by the time we realize the damage, it can be too late. Like any addiction, it's tough to get off it. But if we can accept that it is addiction that we need to work hard at, it makes it a much easier process. Accepting that it's not gonna be easy, but it's totally gonna be worth it, can be a real game changer. Please don't beat yourself up when it doesn't go quite to plan. Just because you have a bad day or a bad week with food and sugar does not mean that you should give up. Tomorrow is a new day. The next hour is a new hour. Just because you accidentally had 12 biscuits doesn't mean you should order pizza and stuffed garlic bread for dinner because, well, I had 12 biscuits, so what's the point? Try and get back into your healthy routine as soon as you identify that you've slipped out of it. Number five, stop the treats. Okay, I'm gonna say it. Do not treat yourself with food. You are not a dog. Treat yourself with something that enriches your life and makes you feel good and awesome. Maybe you're gonna treat yourself with a new face cream 
or a new top from the shop or maybe you're gonna go out to the cinema with friends if you achieve a certain goal. It shouldn't just be about food. Now, maybe you could turn it into an experience. Maybe you can go out for a really nice dinner, which yes, indirectly is about food, but you're not going, oh, I've worked really hard today, I'm gonna have four chocolate bars. That kind of treating is self-destruct in a box. And number six, the 80-20 rule. So taking into account all the things I've said so far, I live on an 80-20 rule principle. If I'm doing everything 80% right, I don't worry about the 20% so much. I'm all about relaxing and enjoying my life. I still want to have the things I crave every now and again. As long as I'm within my 80-20 boundaries, I don't worry too much. Because to be honest, the stress of worrying about it so much is also gonna be detrimental to your health. The 80-20 rule when it comes to health and fitness and lots of areas of my life, to be honest, help me to reduce the stress factor. It helps me to stay calm and on top of things. It helps me to keep things consistent, which is key here. As long as you're doing the previous five points 80% of the time, that is amazing. For me, that's as close as perfect as you're gonna get, so you might as well call it perfect. 80% of the time is perfect. Let's go with that. Don't forget, if you really wanna kickstart things going, do download our 14 day food challenge, which I will link down below. If there's a healthy food habit that's really helped you make some changes, please share it below. It really might make the difference to someone else's life. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.